بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم احمد ہوا وسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فقال رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم العین الحق سو ٹوڈے آئی وانٹ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک اینڈ مائی انٹینشن از ایز مینی ٹائمز جنرلی فار دا ہول اما بٹ ٹوڈے آئی اسپیسیفکلی وانٹ ٹو ٹاک ٹو مائی سنس مائی ڈاٹرس مائی فیملی ممبرس my mothers uh i specifically want to address uh my family members and then the people in our jama and then after that the rest of the umma what i'm about to share with you today is extremely extremely important you should share it with other people and teach them this knowledge because this is one of the things that the umma is losing and uh we're going to talk about what that is and that is the saying of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam something the quran also teaches us which is al ain ul haq that the evil eye is true and its effect is true whether it is our individual life or our collective life as an umma our collective consciousness as a people as an umma i will be talking about that in a little bit later and the other part that i want to touch about specifically is that i want our daughters specifically to be aware of this okay because of the children and themselves and it'll become more clear what i'm trying to say in a little bit okay so love can directly affect dna and conversely now this is a scientific experiment done by uh, this uh, researcher which i'll tell you about in a second but just you remember that uh, experiment that professor ata did ata the japanese professor uh if you remember the japanese professor he took water and then he said some nice things to that water for some time and then he took another uh, you know w- water and he said some negative things or he left something on it with a negative word and then the thing that had good words on it when it crystallized it it was beautiful and when the thing that was negative if you crystallized it was it looked ugly you probably remember this Uh, experiment that has been much talked about but remember the human body is what uh, majority of the human body is water 80% of the human being is water so if we're water then if you take water and say something good to it has a good effect and if you take water and say something bad to it has a negative effect in fact you know what i'm going to show you uh, this experiment that this japanese professor did uh, it, towards the end of this discussion I'll, rem- I'll just in case there's some people who don't know about that um, now so uh, let us start over here okay let us start with this basic point and then we'll come to some sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam some verses of the quran and we'll take it from there love and conversely love can directly affect dna and this is an actual experiment that's been done that i want to share with you now so listen to this uh part carefully and as we do this i'm going to share with you what the prophet also said and what the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said about this issue and you'll see why this is particularly important for uh our little ones and our mothers and our sisters and it's important for everybody but but particularly who are more vulnerable to this our little children and i'll talk more about that in a little bit get into his actual study so let's take a look at this He's saying to us that love itself, the energy of love, can directly affect DNA. And this is the paper from 1996. He'd already written it when I spoke to him and interviewed him back then. The effect of conscious intention on human DNA. That's pretty heavy right there. Now, I'm going to read... No, conscious intention on DNA. Conscious attention on DNA is like what Stil Falak talks. Remember, the whole Quran is ending with these two surahs. Okay? Seek refuge from Allah. From what? From hasad. from from the hasid from the person who envies what is the definition of the one who wants to, who envies a person who wishes that the good that they have is taken away from them zawalul uh, ni'ma the taking away of ni'ma of allah from someone so people can have bad intentions towards people and that can affect them and this is not just a uh, la la land i mean there is a uh, notable uh scientists who have done this experiment over and over again and have seen this effect on the dna and 
this person here is going to explain this in great detail that I think will establish this point. I read you some of this stuff, and it is really mind-blowing. So what he's doing, I'm just kind of hitting the ground running here, but let's just kind of read from here, and you'll get the gist of it. By removing DNA from a body, and, and he'll say in a minute here that it came from placenta. This is important. Placentas are thrown away after a birth, so it's a totally non-confrontational way to get genetic samples, right? That's just wasted otherwise. So they took DNA from multiple placentas. Now this is somebody else's DNA. And then they have certain individuals who are trained in generating this resonance, this heart frequency that he talks about, the energy of love. What happens if you direct your energy, if you direct your feelings of love or hatred towards somebody else's DNA, not yours, but somebody else's. That's what this experiment that we're going to read about is saying. So let's take a look at this. By removing the DNA from the body and placing it in a beaker in front of an individual intending to change the DNA, it was possible to measure a direct energetic link between heart-focused intention and the DNA molecule. This is now, those of you that are more well-read, this is taking epigenetics to another level, right? And it's also uh, very likely that the genes also work at this DNA level of affecting a person's mood and creating an epigenetic at a spiritual level that changes the person, which is what we call magic, which has to do with magic. But I'm not going to talk about magic today. I only want to talk about the evil eye. Okay? So now let's continue. It's amazing. Without any intervening chemical signals coming from the nervous system within the body. Now he's going to explain to us exactly how this works because what's happening is DNA is like a zipper. So in order for DNA to be useful to you, it has to unzip. You have this double helix that wraps around itself. In order for the messenger RNA to get in there and grab little pieces of information and code to use it, in order to tell the body what to do, the DNA has to unzip and unwind. So the unwinding of DNA, like unzipping a zipper, is a very important part of biological processes. And he explains that in this paper, but he does it in a really technical way. I'm trying to make it a little simpler. So you have to understand here that there's something about that dodecahedron now where the frequency changes and it expands, it widens. And as it widens, it's going to open up the double helix. It's going to open up the DNA so that the code can be accessed. So what this also means, though, is that as DNA actually unwinds, it has satisfied its mission. It dies. You can't zip it back up necessarily, or at least normally you wouldn't be expected to. So when DNA is coalesced, when it's in that dodecahedron shape, the DNA is alive. And in scientific terms, when the DNA unwinds, it is now dead. Typically, it doesn't wind back up. So what he's actually looking at is, can human beings wind and unwind DNA? Could, for example, a person take DNA that is partially unwound and zip it back together? And the answer actually is yes. This is what's so amazing. Human consciousness, human love, having a direct effect. In other words, the quality of the heart of the person has a direct effect on other people and their DNA on the zipping or unzipping of DNA, which makes sense if we're seeing that the resonance is what holds that DNA in place and you change the <laughs> resonance with your consciousness. So let's get back into this now and read more of what he's saying here. A direct link between consciousness and DNA. Although human DNA was used in these experiments, it was a pooled sample from the placenta of many individuals. It is likely that even larger effects would be seen if the subject, in this case the person sending the energy, was directing their intention to their own DNA. But to me, actually... I now, this is very important, and I want to take some time here. Your own DNA, your own self, right? This is like the dua of the Prophet. Allahumma ja'alni nuran. Oh Allah, make me light. Wa basari nuran. And make my eyes light. Wa sam'i nuran. And my hearing light, wa lisani nuran, and my tongue light, wa wajhi nuran, and my face light, wa sha'ri nuran, and my hair to make it light, wa bashari nuran, and to make my skin light, wa lahmi nuran, wa adami nuran, and to make my flesh light, and to make my bones light, wa dami nuran, and to make my blood light, 
like every part of the body of your own, your own DNA, every part, and in my heart put light. And in fact, uh, you may not know this, but DNA in fact absorbs light, like it actually absorbs ultraviolet light. Light, I'll show that to you uh, in a little bit in this discussion. Okay, and so the Prophet is praying, Allah, make, make my body light, right? Make me light. And light is how we know DNA is alive, that it's functional, it's fully functional. And when somebody has a bad intent on someone, they're affecting their DNA, meaning making the, uh, the DNA in, ineffective in what it's supposed to do. This is one way to look at it. But... Uh, let us look at some things that the Prophet has said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Ainu Al-Haq, the eye is true, the effect of the eye, the intent of the person, how he looks at you with compassion or with love, like many people talk about, especially in Islamic mysticism, in Tasawwuf, they talk about how if a sheikh looks at someone, or let's take it even more, if the Prophet looks at someone, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how it affects them how it affected them. That just seeing the Prophet wasallam and believing in him, looking at him, and looking at his beauty, looking at him with his intent, right? A person becomes a sahab, a companion of the Prophet wasallam by the effect of him looking at them, right? While they believe in him. And so they're able to receive that, that barakah. So, uh, if you look at somebody with good intent, it has a good effect. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kalimatin tayyibatin, kashajaratin tayyibatin. A good word, okay, you said a good word is like a good tree. Asluha thabitun, it's deeply rooted in the ground. Wafarruha sama, and its branches are in the sky. And kalimatin khabithatin, an evil, evil word is like an evil tree, it has no roots. And it's just laying on the ground. It's dead. It's dead. That's what the Pro Allah said in the Quran. It's dead. And this is exactly how it is. People who have negative thoughts, who have jealousy, who have bad intent upon the ummah individually or collectively through Islamophobia or whatever, it has an effect from people's hearts to us. And so therefore, you have to have an impact on yourself. You have to protect yourself using the Qur'an, using the du'as, using the adhkar, when you're saying, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, you're saying, kul wallah wahad, and the adhkar of going to sleep, kul a'udhu bi rabbil falak, kul a'udhu bi rabbil nas, when you're reading this, it's affecting your whole body, it's affecting your whole body, it is protecting your whole body, in the same way, still kahf will protect some people from the jat, if it gets absorbed and fixed, fixed into them, that, that rhythm, that vibration, the effect of the vibration, right? That's what, and and so let's, inshallah, so the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, al-aynu al-haq, and this in fact comes in many narrations of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet says, al-aynu al-haq, the, 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 the ayn, the, the evil eye is true, okay? And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and the Prophet forbade tattooing. So there's a link. When you create animals on your body, it might have an effect on you and it has to get disinfected. But I'm not going to go there right now. Okay? I'm just pointing something out. And then, uh, what? The Prophet says, Al Ainul Haq. And another place, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are authentic narrations, by the way. The Prophet, Al-Ainul Haq, Law kana shay'un sabiqul qadr, sabaqahu al-ayn. If something is written in qadr, then ayn, the evil eye, will surpass what is written for you. Okay? So the Prophet says, if you want to relieve yourself from this, وَإِذَا أُسْتَغْلِسْتُمْ فَغْسِلُوا If you want, then wash yourself with ghusl. So the way to remove ayn is to do ghusl with the intent of removing ayn. Okay? And this also comes in the Qur'an and other places, but I'm not going to go into all of that right now. Here's some more uh, sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. Al-Aynul Haq, Al-Aynul Haq, the eye, the effect of the eye is true. The effect of the eye is true. Tastanzilul Haliq. 
then relieve your situation, Allah, the Prophet said, relieve your situation from that. This, the effect of the eye, okay, is so much so that, let me share with you uh, one of the, uh, Uh, verses of the Quran I want to share with you. This one. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the ayn, the effect of the ayn. kafaru, And those people who deny the truth, what would they do? بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ They want to make you slip by their eyes. Their hate for you is so they just can't wait till you mess up. And they want to affect you with that. And when they hear the message, meaning of the Quran, they say, oh, he's majnoon. And in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have made this Quran a hijab, as a barrier, as a protection between you and those that disbelieve in you. Because the people that disbelieve, that are your enemies, they have such hatred in their heart, you can't even begin to hate them that much. You have to protect yourself from that, from the effect of that. Okay, with that said, let's go back now. I think it's even more provocative that you can change somebody else's DNA. Because as we're going to see here... Islamically, because the Prophet knows more, Islamically, it's more important to protect yourself. Doing the adhkar and protecting yourself and protecting your loved ones and going to sleep with adhkar and doing your prayers. There's a reason this is there. It's there because until the ummah is not good in its vibration, in its reading of Quran, in listening to Quran, doing adhkar, until you do, do, you're, you're not continuously in a state of dhikr, then the you could say this the collective subconscious level of the others will continue to keep you colonized so to get out of that you need to get uh, that protection so anyway let's listen you can kill somebody else's dna you can harm it you can cause it to unravel which is causing death in the body you could kill other people's tissues just by and this is exactly what the prophet said that the Prophet says that if most of the people in my ummah will die because of Ayn, most of the people in my ummah will die because of the evil eye. That's the effect of the evil eye. That's how important it is to protect yourself from it, both individually and collectively. And I'm going to talk about this aspect a little bit more in a it's bit. Sending directed negative energy to them, and it's laboratory proven. And the science on this is absolutely bulletproof. So let's keep reading, and I'll show you how this works. These experiments measured the winding and unwinding of the two strands which make up the DNA double helix, also referred to, this is just the geek speak term now, as conformational changes in the secondary structure of DNA. Okay, fair enough. Unwinding of DNA precedes the dividing of a cell, among other things, it also accesses the genetic code, and winding of DNA is associated with DNA repair. And I guess in certain cases, DNA can be repaired. It's not like all unwound DNA is dead. And that is a good point, too, which is that DNA naturally has to unravel to make two cells. So in cell division, the DNA unwinds, and then it repairs itself and comes back into a double-strand DNA as the one cell becomes two cells. But when you read this paper, he also talks about the idea that unwound DNA is dead and wound DNA is alive. So let's keep reading. A UV spectrophotometer, we're going to see that in just a second. So now this is more about how this experiment is done. And so he's going to show you that how they experimented and found out that intent affects the DNA. So this is the experiment. Hewlett-Packard was used to measure <coughs> the winding and unwinding of DNA. This is a standard biochemical technique based on the fact that DNA absorbs ultraviolet light at 260 nanometers. So this is important, very important, actually. I talked to you about the DNA phantom effect, how if you put DNA in a room that's very dark and there's just a little bit of light in there, that all of the light, all the photons, get sucked into the DNA. Well, this optical quality of DNA is how geneticists test 
to see if a DNA is alive or dead. A DNA is alive or dead based upon how much of the light it can receive. That's the standard test. And the ideal ultraviolet light frequency, the frequency of those photons that works the best, is 260 nanometers. So when DNA is wound up and alive, it's going to have light in it at 260 nanometers, and they can detect that by counting how much light is in the DNA with this spectrophotometer from Hewlett Packard. If the DNA unwinds and is dead, then there's not as much light in it, and when they look at it with the spectrophotometer, it's not going to have the same amount of light in it. So that's the key. That's what you need to see here. It was demonstrated that DNA in deionized water was stable when it was kept at room temperature for two hours. This is important because that just means that when you have the DNA in the water, we know it's stable, meaning it's going to have the same amount of light in it. It's not like it's dying. It's not like the light is going to disappear over two hours. It stays consistent. You check it with this machine over the course of two hours, and it holds exactly the same amount of light in it. It's not leaking light, and it's not absorbing light. It stays the same. So let's take a look at this machine. Now, I'm not sure if this is the one that he was using or not, but this is an example of a high-technology spectrophotometer from Hewlett-Packard. <coughs> There's test tubes on the right there, and in those test tubes you would have your sample, in this case from the placenta of those donor mothers. You take that placental tissue that has DNA in it, and you stick it in the area between the two boxes. And you'll notice there's a little metallic thing there, like a little stage, almost like a microscope plate. And you stick the tissue sample in there, and then what it's doing is it's actually drilling down on it microscopically and counting photons at a very, very, very tiny level. And then it sends them into a computer. So here again is that same particular Hewlett-Packard machine with the computer readout that it has next to it, where it's actually counting how many photons are there and where those photons are located. That's the key. So the readout is giving you an active diagram of how much light is in your sample. It's a spectrophotometer. It is counting the light in your sample. So this is the setup. This is what we then have people working in front of this machine, working on that tissue sample, and changing the optical properties of the sample. So what could happen, for example, is you have this sample of tissue. You put it in the machine. You check how much light is in it. You take it out. You have somebody send their energy to it. And then you put it back in the machine again. Really simple, right? All of mainstream science would tell you there is no way that the amount of light in that DNA should have changed. But that's not what happens. Let's take a look. Initial experiments were done with Leonard Laskow, who used a combination of directed intention, unconditional love, and specific imagery of the DNA molecule at the molecular and atomic level often focusing on the hydrogen bonds which hold the two strands together. So he's literally visualizing, trying to wind and unwind DNA. He's even looking at the hydrogen holding the two rungs of the DNA together. But wait a minute, who is Leonard Laskow? This is Leonard Laskow. And he's not just anybody, he's actually a prominent researcher who has focused on, as his book is called, Healing with Love. You can see there he's got a medical doctorate, He's an MD, and it says the art and science of healing yourself and others through love and grace. So he is one of the people in this institute that's called the Institute of Heart Math that Dr. Glenn Ryan has worked for. And Leonard Laskow was able to set this intention to wind or unwind DNA in the lab. And he's doing this in his mind, but then let's see, did it work? Did anything actually happen when he did this? These experiments revealed that different intentions produce different effects on the DNA molecule. That's a very important point, causing it to either wind or unwind. And this is really significant because Laskow wasn't just loving the DNA and making it heal. He could send anger and hate to the DNA and cause it to unwind. He could kill the DNA. And so this is... One of the examples of how this actually works, and it says here, these results were later confirmed in an extensive series of experiments done at the Institute of Heart Math. So that's all the time we have in this episode, and it's actually taking me longer. So you all get the point, right? This concept is so important <coughs> that Institute Yusuf, Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, 
says to his sons when they were entering into Egypt. He said, Qala ya bunayya, Oh my dear son, لا تدخلوا من أبواب واحد Don't all of you, all brothers, strong and all, you know, your family looking good, don't enter from one door. وَادْخُلُوا مِنْ أَبْوَابِ الْمُتَفَرِّقَةِ But enter all from different doors of the city. Okay? So, why did he say this? One of the reasons that, that scholars and others have said is because, so because of the effect of the ayn, right? People, if you, sh if you show off the things Allah has given you, and then people become jealous, then that's going to affect that. Okay, let's take another example. Who is else is looking at you with hate? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, okay, uh, إِنَّهُ يَرَوْكُمْ Shaytan sees you. Now, he, إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ أَدُوُّ مُبِينَ He's your clear enemy and he sees you. With what type of heart, with what type of energy is he looking at you? إِنَّهُ يَرَوْكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلَهُ Him and his entire tri his tribe people, they're all seeing you with that evil intent. مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ from where you can't see them. Okay, they see you. And uh, inna ja'alna shayateena and we made the shayateen the friends of those who don't believe. Meaning, they entice them against those who believe. They put bad thoughts in the hearts of the disbelievers against the believers. So if the believers are not protecting themselves from shaytan, like, a'udhu billahi min shaytan al-rajim, a'udhu billahi sami al-alimi min shaytan al-rajim, in the method of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, a'udhu billahi min shaytan al-rajim sami al-alim. Okay? And so, if you're not protecting yourself from shaytan, you're not protecting yourself from the evil eye, eye the evil eyes of others, in this is very, very important for Muslims to do in terms of dhikr and protecting themselves. Okay? Because all that media, all that repetition, all of that is part of this magic, is part of this evil eye. Right? Part, part of looking down upon and having bad thoughts and bad intent when they make a movie against Muslims or they say something in the media against Muslims or when they talk even about, oh, uh, this many Palestinians have been killed. Right? This is if they're saying this with the intent that this is a good thing, okay, then what's happening? Then that's affecting the Muslims. It's that intent of the, the heart is very powerful. It affects, and, and your intent is very powerful. People's intent is very powerful. And so you have to do, you have to remember Allah. You have to do dhikr. You have to read Quran every single day. Every single day. You have to have those vibrations. In fact, about those vibrations, I'll share with you. This vibration is so powerful that Allah says, وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ When you read the Qur'an, جَعَلْنَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ We make between you and those who don't believe, those that have rejected the truth, who hate you. Right? Just as we read that the awliya al the the friends of the shaytan, shaytan hates you and shaytan causes his friends to hate you. So, بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ حِجَابًا مَسْطُورًا And when you read the Qur'an, we place between you and those who do not believe in the hereafter an invisible barrier. They cannot cross that barrier. They cannot see you. They, you become invisible to the world of shayateen. And therefore, you're not targeted as much, okay, by them. Uh, and so, and so, and, and, and then Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةٍ أَنْ يَفْقَهُ فِي آذَانِ مُقْرَىٰ And we put veils in their hearts and they, we prevent them from understanding because of the heaviness in their ears. And this is because of the Qur'an and because of the Qur'an when you also are talking secretly or privately, shaitan is not able to tell what is it that you're planning for the deen, for Islam. Because you're reading Qur'an, you're doing dhikr. You're protecting yourself and you're protecting the people around you. You're protecting not only your household, but up to up to 40 houses around you, uh, some of the scholars have said. Now, there's another aspect of this that I want to share. This is one of the reasons why Allah says, be very careful where your eyes look, particularly when it comes to the other gender. gender. So Allah subhanahu wa says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُغْدُونَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Say to the believing men to lower their their gaze don't look at, because as soon as you look you will think positively negatively you know uh, because it could have a negative effect 
And so Allah says to the believing men, don't look. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the same thing to the believing women. Prevent yourself from looking. Because what does Allah say right after? This is the effect. I'm not saying you or it'll happen. I'm saying this is the effect. Allah says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُغْدُونَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفُظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ And protect your modesty. Why? Because if the other person you're looking at doesn't have a modest mind, that will affect you. And when the male is looking at the female, it will affect you. And in the same way, if a man is looking at a woman and she doesn't have a modest mind and he's looking at her and she's looking at him and she's affecting him, his DNA, his thoughts, and she, he's affecting her and they're engaged without knowing in this uh, interaction of thoughts or effect upon each other, then that will lead one to influence the other. And the immodest will begin to influence the modest. So what's the way out of that? Don't even look. Don't let that happen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the women, the same thing. <clears throat> Allah says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Say to the believing women, يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَزْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ And say to the believing women, lower their gaze. Women should also lower their gaze because you don't know what the other man's thinking. If you put contact eye to eye, right, it could have a negative effect. وَيَحْفُزُنَّ فُرُوجَهُنَّ And protect your modesty, your private parts. Because if he has intent towards somebody's private parts, because people have a disease in their heart, and so you don't know what effect they're having. Especially with in, in, in as sexuality as it is after the sexual revolution now. And, and with all the other stuff that's going on. When you're looking at something on TV, or and, and she is acting, and she's pretending to seduce, or love, or romantic, whatever, that's going to affect you to some degree. And so it's, it's very important to understand these things affect us. The eyes are true, they have an effect. Okay? And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya ayuhan nabi, O Prophet, قُلْ azwajika, Say to your wives, وَلِبَنَاتِكَ And to your daughters, وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And to the believing men, يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ بِجَلَابِهِنَّ To lengthen their garments properly over themselves. Okay? ذَلِكَ أَدْنَا أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا وَفَلَا يُعْزَيْنَ This is better how they should be recognized and they should not be hurt or injured. How will they be injured? What, is, what injury is this talking about? Well, there could be different types, but one of them is just by the gaze of the person, right? Just by him, have, but when he sees a modest woman, let's say if she's doing niqab, then she's completely protecting herself. But if she's not wearing niqab and she's just doing hijab, she's reminding the other person, I'm not that type. So don't have those thoughts, right? And so, فَلَا يُعْزَيْنَ Removing those thoughts from the, the negative thoughts from the people's minds. The hijab is 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 a very powerful uh, weapon, very powerful weapon, because it decides how other people will think about you. And it is also, a, nowadays, a political statement. The hijab is a political statement. You're saying you stand for modesty in a world that, uh, you, 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 you stand against immodesty in a world that is so immodest. And you're on the side of modesty. So the eye has an effect. And so, dear brothers and sisters and loved ones, protect yourself. Protect yourself because people are looking at you. People are looking at you in social media. People are looking at you everywhere. Okay? people. More people are looking at you per day than ever in history. More intent is being put upon you than ever in history. Okay? Collectively at the media level, as an ummah, as a people, individually. You're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, you're on so many places. If you do that, if you are in that, if you are in the, uh, you know, if people are looking at you more, more than ever before, you need to protect yourself more than ever before. You need to make sure you're on your dhikr, you're doing your adhkar, you're doing your wird, you're doing your Quran every single day. Because it is the barrier that will protect you. 
And al aynul haq the eye is true. It has a true effect upon people. And this is one of the reasons that it's raining fitans in the Muslim world. is because why? Muslims are not protecting themselves anymore. Muslims are not reading Quran anymore. Muslims have left that vibrational power. It is the most power. It is the word of Allah. It is the most powerful thing. What does Sutul Kahf end with? Right? It ends with the kalimas of Allah, the words of Allah, the words of Allah and its power and how it is infinite. Right? Law kan al bahru, law kan al Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Sutul Kahf, "Qul law kan al bahru midad kalimati Rabbi." Say, if the oceans were ink of, for the words of my Lord, لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرِ the, the, the bahr, the oceans would finish. قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي Before the words of my Lord would run out. Meaning that's the power. It is infinite. It's like a running ocean. When you say, subhanAllah, it like fills the heavens and the earth, this lower heavens and the earth. كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي لَوْ جِعْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَذَدَ Even if you add more. And this revelation is powerful. Quran is powerful. It's a powerful protection. So if you're reading Quran every day, you'll see its benefit. Starting with the benefit in the heart, the strength in the heart, the sakina in the heart, how it will help you in your daily life. But then it'll protect you, your, your DNA. It'll perfect, protect you. And then have good intent on Muslims. And, it, and then be aware and protect yourself from the harm of others looking at you. Because more people are looking at us through this, the, the, this, the, all the surveillances that are being done. Okay? All the surveillances that are being done. You're being looked at more per day than ever before in history. So, protect yourself. That's the lesson. And the lesson that this man... Oh, I wanted to show you one thing before we leave. Remember, human beings are 80% water. More than 80% water. So what happens? Now look. The work of Japanese researcher Mr. Masuru Emoto from his book, The Message from Water. Mr. Emoto's work provides factual evidence that human vibrational energy, thoughts, words, ideas, and music affect the molecular structure of water. Please remember that water comprises over 70% of a mature human body and covers the same amount on our planet. Water is the very source of all life. This photo shows the beautifully formed geometric design of the Yushi Spring water. This next photo is from the Shimanto River, the last clean spring in Japan. Notice the extraordinary geometric forms. The fact that the molecular structure of water can be affected by our consciousness, our intent, and our sounds is extremely important. This photo is from the Mount Cook Glacier in New Zealand. Mr. Moto has been visually documenting these molecular changes in water by means of his photographic techniques. He freezes droplets of water, then examines them under a dark field microscope that is photographic capabilities. His work clearly demonstrates the diversity of the molecular structure of water and the effects of the environment upon the structure of the water. This photo is from the fountain in Lourdes, France. This photo is from contaminated water from the Yodo River in Japan. In this photo, we can compare the contaminated water with clean stream water. Look at the difference. Mr. Omoda decided to see what effects music would have upon the structure of water. He placed distilled water between two speakers for several hours while playing different music and then photographing the crystals that formed after the water was frozen. This photo is of water being exposed to Beethoven's Pastorale. This photo is the effect of boxed air for the G-string on the water.
This photo is water exposed to Chopin's farewell song. This next photo is water being exposed and affected to music that was designed for healing. This photo is of water being exposed to the Kawachi folk dance. <coughs> this photo shows the effect of heavy metal music upon the water. Here now we can compare the effects of healing versus heavy metal music and what happens to the water molecules. Mr. Omoto decided to see how thoughts and words affected the formation of untreated distilled water crystals by typing words onto paper and then taping this paper onto glass bottles overnight. This photo shows the effects of the words, thank you. This next photo shows the effects of the words, love and appreciation. This photo shows the effects of the word, you make me sick, I will kill you. And here we can compare the effects of thank you with the you make me sick, I will kill you. Very, very different geometric forms being incurred through the intention. Now this photo is of a very polluted and toxic water from the Fujiwara Dam. Here now is the same water from the Fujiwara Dam after a Buddhist monk had offered a prayer over it. Prayer, that sound coupled with intention, seems to have an extraordinary ability of restoring water to its natural, harmonious, geometric symmetry. And in this photo we can compare the toxic water and then the effects of praying over the water. Okay. So what's the message? The message is al al haq The eye has an effect. The eye has an effect. The eye has an effect. People's intent has an effect. The jealous person has an effect. The good person has an effect. People looking at you with all sorts of thoughts has an effect. The collective ummah and looking at the news of the ummah and the ummah always being in the news, Muslims always being in the news, either being in hurt or suffering or in pain or in some other negative light has an effect. All of this has an effect. So what are you going to do? What should you do? What do you have to do? Then you have to protect yourself from the negative effects of even people around you. People that are your friends but may not be true friends. Protect yourself from showing off. Protect yourself by reading Quran. Protect yourself by doing adhkar. Affect through the vibration of Quran, through the humming of Quran, every single cell of your body, every single portion of your body. And that will affect your ruh, which is connected to this body. And so, it is extremely important that you do your adhkar in the morning, in the evening, going to bed, doing your prayers, doing your Qur'an, doing your dhikr. It's very, very important you focus on that. If you're spending more time on social media, more time on reading news, and you don't spend any time doing dhikr, you don't do your prayers, and then... Even if you know everything about all the conspiracy theories and all the occults and everything, if you know all that, it is zero, zero for you to know that, to know what's happening in the news. It's zero. In fact, it's negative. If you're not doing your adhkar and your prayers, if you're not focused on that, then shaitan has you tricked, no matter how much you think you know about what's happening in the world. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.